Hello, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me. Now, occasionally when we start anything new, whether it's a hobby, a job or whatever, we do make mistakes. Now, some of these mistakes can be costly and they do say that you can learn by mistakes, but it's always best if you just get started right in the first place. So what I've done is I've just put a, together a few pointers just to point you in the right direction to get the very best out of the night sky and your telescope. Now this refers to cleaning your telescope's optics, or should I say, over cleaning. You see, if you over clean telescope optics, you can actually do more harm than good. Telescope mirrors and lenses only very, very occasionally need anything more than a good blast of air. And this is your best friend when it comes to cleaning optics. Now this is just like a bulb air blower. It just blows a, a little jet of air. You can get this in compressed air form, in an air in a can if you like. I wouldn't recommend that. Bad for the environment and all that lot. Why pay for something that's free and all the way around you? But one of these will last you for years and years and years. And uh, whether it's a refracting telescope or a reflecting telescope, if you can get down that is to the, to the mirror, just a quick blast of air is all you're going to need. You see, telescope mirrors and lenses have a very fine coating on it. Some's for enter reflection, some's for just a protective coating. But this is an incredibly fine coating and you can quite easily take that away with abrasive uh, rubbing, you know, any kind of rubbing. So if there's a little bit of dust on your lens of your uh, telescope, don't worry about it, it's not going to interfere with your overall views. Same goes for the mirror. Mirrors have to be in incredibly bad shape before you can e even consider cleaning one. Um, I mean, I've had this telescope probably four or five years and I've cleaned the mirror once. So as long as you keep your dust covers on when the telescope's not in use, then that's all it's gonna need, you know, it, you, like once in a blue moon, basically, to clean your mirrors. Um, now, there are, there are apps, exceptions to this. Um, if you do live in a, a climate that's very dusty, for instance, you have a very dry climate and there's big dust clouds everywhere, then obviously you're going to accumulate a lot more dirt than, than normal. Uh, another example would be if you live on the coast. We all know what sea air can do to glass. You get that milky um, sort of, uh, uh, film that gets onto glass with the high salt content in the air. So in those cases, um, which are pretty extreme, you may need to clean your mirrors and your lenses a little bit more often. So remember, less is more when it comes to cleaning optics. Just a quick blast of air is all you're going to need. Now, one thing that is important to do before you start observing is to let your telescope climatize to the air outside. Now, it's a, a, a pretty bad mistake actually to actually take your telescope straight from a warm house outside. Now, whether this is summertime or wintertime, it really doesn't matter. You've got to get your, the, the, the air inside the tube of the telescope to match the air of the outside. If you don't, what's going to happen is you'll get thermal wobbles. The warm air hitting the uh, colder air is going to cause that wobble effect that you, you see when heat rises. Now, you then insert your eyepiece and this is going to actually, your eyepiece will magnify this even more. You're simply not going to get good focus and the image, like I say, will just look like you're looking underwater really. Now, with telescopes of say this size, now this is a five inch reflector, I would give it a good 30 minutes uh, before you actually start using it. Anything bigger than five inch, I would give up to 40 minutes to an hour to let the telescope cool down. Now, it's always a good idea to actually remove your dust covers, remove all your dust covers to have no eyepieces in. This will allow the airflow to circulate around the telescope a lot quicker, cooling it down a lot quicker. Now, this also applies to uh, refracting type telescopes like this. Um, now, these can sometimes take uh, a little bit longer to climatize. Uh, but what I do is I always take out everything now, uh, the, the, the diagonal and the eyepiece. So leave, leave an open end in the tube like that, allowing air to circulate around inside the tube. It's going to cool the telescope down a lot quicker. 
Um, so don't forget anything bigger than five inch, uh, you're going to, you want to leave it a good hour, anything smaller, something like 30 to 40 minutes will be fine. But always let your telescope cool down um, for your best views um, of the night sky. Now, if your telescope is in one, on one of these type of mounts, which is called an equatorial mount, it really is important to actually use it as it's designed to be used. Now, what I mean by this is I, I have heard over the years of some horror stories of how people actually use one of these things. There is a slight bit of a learning curve. They are really easy to, to actually get to the hang of uh, using an EQ uh, mount, but you must use it correctly. An equatorial mount doesn't move up, down, left, right, like a, um, like a normal camera tripod, say. They're actually move in an arc, an arc form, um, and it, this can kind of come Confuse the new newbie to these uh, to these mounts, and I've heard all kinds of horror stories like people actually using the uh, locking nut that's on the telescope and actually using that to to use the to, to have the left and right um, motion on on the telescope and and, and even using the altitude <laughs> um, locking nuts on here which which sets your your altitude and using that for the up and down. Please don't do this. Your telescope is gonna fight against you. You're not gonna get the full benefits of an equatorial mount. Now, I have done a quick start guide to using an equatorial mount. I'll put that, I'll leave that link in the description. Um, but once you get to uh, used to using an EQ mount, you'll never go back to an Altaz again, uh, the up, down, left one, right one. Uh, they're incredibly useful and they are designed to make life a lot easier. So if you're not using this correctly, you're going to make life hard for yourself and you're really not going to get any benefit from an equatorial mount. Now, astrophotography has become incredibly popular over the last few years, and it's one subject or one part of astronomy that has a complete new learning curve. Now, I've seen this happen to quite a few astronomers where they've jumped into astrophotography far too quickly, and they buy all the gear, they spend a lot of money on it, and it's been a hobby killer basically to them. They've, they've just sort of gave up uh, and they don't want to do astronomy anymore. Now this is a crying shame. I don't want this to happen. Now I'm not saying that don't do astro astrophotography, but what I would do is take baby steps into astrophotography before you actually start buying all the gear for it. And a good start is the mobile phone. You can take some great photographs these days with just the aid of a mobile phone. Try that first, see how you get on with it, see if you enjoy it. Because believe me, just using a mobile phone takes a little bit of time um, and a little bit of a learning curve just with a mobile phone. Then maybe move on to a cheaper sort of astro camera. Uh, SV Boney do a very affordable camera. And this is gonna be a good gateway into using you know, a real astro uh, camera if you like, because with that, you're going to need to use computer software. You're going to have to learn the programs and, and, and various stacking methods and the rest of it. Uh, but start off low and do baby steps. Trust me, folks, I've seen it happen to too many people where they've just got overwhelmed with it all. You need an incredible amount of patience time and deep pockets in a, a lot of cases when it comes to astrophotography. So please don't jump in at both feet on the astro astrophotography side of things. There's a lot of brilliant and amazing things you can do with just your telescope and an eyepiece. So appreciate, I always say, appreciate the telescope, learn your way around the night sky, uh, things like that. Uh, for a good 12, 18 months before you even think about starting to take uh, uh, photographs of the night sky. But like I say, try it with your mobile phone first. Again, I've done videos on this, how to even take photographs of deep sky targets with your mobile phone. So uh, jump onto my library on uh, hints and tips, I think it is, on my section. Have a look on there and you'll find some videos on how to use your mobile phone, get some great photographs. But please, 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 don't go spending hundreds and hundreds of pounds and finding out you don't actually like astrophotography because it does happen more than you can imagine.
Now in astronomy, we've got, you've got to learn to love the dark. Now, what I mean by this is, is to get your eyes into night vision mode or your eyes to be adapted to the dark. Um, you know what it's like if you're fast asleep and you turn the light on and oh, your eyes are like that. Well, that's because you, your eyes are not dark adapted. Uh, you may have noticed that sometimes when you first walk out and you look up, you can see lots of stars. Then all of a sudden, as the night goes on, you can see more stars. Well, it doesn't mean that there's more stars appearing. It simply means your eyes are getting used to the darkness and your pupils are opening up and the, the rods, all the rods that pick up all the, um, the more sensitive uh, parts of our eyes start activating. And it's really important to get this going. Now, this can take up to about 30 to 20 to 30 minutes in most people to get properly and fully dark adaptation. Now, it's always a good idea, if you can, and if, if at all possible, to actually sit in a dark room before, you know, a good half an hour before you actually start going out to uh, out in the night sky. Now, this is really only important if you're going to be doing deep sky astronomy. Um, if you know, you're looking for those faint, faint uh, objects in the night sky. If it's just the moon or the planets that you're going to look for, it's not uh, totally necessary. But it's always a good idea to get, you, to get your eyes into that night vision mode uh, to see the more finer details in the night sky. Now, you may have heard that red lights are a good choice, and they are. Um, I've got one here. Uh, it's just a head torch with a red light on it. But as you can see, this is really, really bright, and it's far too bright for the night, for, for, for maintaining your uh, night vision. So a good idea is a couple of layers of uh, brown parcel tape. If you just put some brown parcel tape over the, the, the front of the lens of uh, whatever it is, a torch, head torch, whatever, um, this is going to really dramatically cut down that red light. Um, really, a red light torch is only wants to illuminate what you want to see, basically. So if you're using a star chart or something like that, you know, it's it, as you can see, this is far, far too bright. Um, I use this for walking, actually, dog walking, so uh, in the winter. But uh, yeah, a couple of layers of brown tape, that's all you're going to need. Keep that night vision down. Also a good idea is to leave your mobile phone in the house, if at all possible. Mobile phones are terrible for ruining your night vision. Remember, 20 to 30 minutes to get your eyes totally uh, into night vision mode. Uh, so if you get a phone call or you look at your phone, that's your night vision gone in an instant. Be prepared. Always get everything ready that you need for a night's viewing. Because if you come indoors, that's it. Again, your night vision has gone. So get yourself organized. Try and sit in a dark room for, like I say, a good 20 minutes before you go outside. But don't forget, you need to cool your telescope down anyway. So while your telescope's cooling down, sit in a dark room, get yourself ready. And finally, Turn expectation into appreciation. It's something I said on a video years ago and people said I need to put that on a t-shirt. And I think they're right because you see today we are spoiled with the internet and everybody expects to see fantastic, amazing pictures of galaxies, details in planets. And the truth of the matter is even in large telescopes, planets, nebula, they really look quite small in the eyepiece. Um, of course you can see detail, of course the bigger the telescope the more detail you're gonna see, but they are not anything like a photograph that you will see on the internet. So, and it can be quite disappointing to a lot of people when they first buy a telescope because that's what they expect to see. And if you, as soon as you can um, cancel all that out, and just appreciate what you're actually seeing through the eyepiece of the telescope, you are gonna appreciate the entire night sky and this hobby so much more. You've gotta remember the targets that you're looking at, if you're looking at a nebula, you're actually looking back in time. It's taken literally thousands of years for that light to reach your eyeball. So remember, turn expectation into appreciation. 
So there you go, folks. Just a few little uh, pointers to point you in the right direction. And don't forget to have a look at my tips and tricks and hints and all that lot that I've got in my on the main page of my channel. I'm sure you'll find some more things on there that are going to help you uh, get the very best out of your telescope and the night sky. Now, before I leave, I just want to say a special thank you to all the super thanks that I've been getting over the last few months. And I'm going to make a, a special exception now. Any super thanks that I do get, I'm going to give you a special shout out because I think you deserve it. I can't tell you how much I appreciate them and, and how much it helps. If you're not quite sure what a super thanks is, if you look just below uh, my channel, you'll see like a money symbol. And that's just to say... Hey Jay, I liked your video, here's a drink on me. And like I say, I really, really do appreciate it. Thank you to each and every one of you, you know who you are, who've already sent me super thanks. Like I say, I can't thank you enough. Well, that's it for another video, folks. Thank you so much for joining me. And uh, don't forget, like, share, subscribe, especially hit that thumbs up button. That's the one that really does help me out. In the meantime, folks, go and enjoy the night sky and I will see you on the next one. Bye for now.